Once upon a time, a fair maiden called Melinda Messenger set out on a romantic quest for true love. It's here in this castle in Ziza that Germany's only troubadour resides, a man who lives in the Middle Ages. This mop-topped minstrel is Nikolai de Tresco, who considers himself the last of the troubadours. He has devoted his life to the art of gallantry and seduction that flourished in the Middle Ages. In fact, Nikolai runs a school teaching jittery Germans the basic rules of romance. And who better for the pupils to practice on than the mouth-watering Melinda Messenger? Now I really do feel the path. What do you think? Laced up and looking lovely, it's time for the princess to inspect her suitors. Tights are looking good. Got to watch out for that Nikolai now. <laughs> In the first phase of the seduction, the minstrel of love attempts to woo Melinda with a series of sweet nothings. I am so honoured. Thou have exceeded my expectations. Thou art a veritable picture of a lady from the Middle Ages. Troubadour's very keen on busty blondes, you know. Mm. Thank you. And the dexterity with which Nikolai operates his instrument has been known to move ladies to tears. As an adolescent, I found that I wasn't very attractive to women on account of my big nose. But by playing my instrument, I saw they became quite excited. In the next lesson of the day, Nikolai leads his pupils into the castle grounds and gives them a masterclass in medieval chat-up lines. It's a game of seduction, not about thou getting your leg over. Thou has to be worthy of her love, beseech her. Oh, you're beautiful. Wow. Uh, I think it needs a bit more work. And verily I say unto thee, thou must penetrate her eyes uh, and invite her to sit on your horse. Nikolai's students are expected to become well-versed in the art of mounting and dismounting. I hope you're taking notes at home. So why did you use horses? There's nothing more erotic than flinging your lady onto the back of a horse. You can smell the warmth between your legs and really feel the passion. The ultimate act of chivalry occurs with this ritual foot bath, where potential suitors lovingly wash their fair maiden's feet. The ritual foot washing represents the sexual climax, the ultimate noble act. By doing it, thou pledges undying love, and the fair lady becomes the woman of your dreams. Mm. Oh. Hmm. The taste of your feet really makes me horny. Ah, give me another goblet. So, after being schooled in the ancient arts of seduction, courtly love and skipping, Melinda Messenger slips back to the 20th century. What's her verdict on the medieval lads? Mm, well, I appreciate the effort and dedication, but frankly, any man that drinks my foot water won't be getting a goodnight kiss from me. Pondering the verdant hills of the North Devon countryside is quite interesting, but what Eurotrash really wants to know is why the lovely Melinda Messenger is sitting on a toadstool. Here I am outside Putford Gnome Reserve, the headquarters for British Gnomes, where for the past 18 years a thousand of these woodland creatures have been seeking refuge in Europe's only gnome sanctuary. After slipping on their pointy hats, visitors are transported to Never Neverland, where grown-ups talk to six-inch statues. Shh, they're reading. Melinda is on a pilgrimage to a rotting tree trunk, otherwise known as the sacred seat of the magical gnome. She's casting a wish for a playmate to accompany her on her second childhood, and she's not going to be disappointed. Here's John Major's brother, Terry, a gnome enthusiast fighting gnome prejudice wherever it rears its ugly little head. I've always thought gnomes were jolly little fellas, um, but basically I, I hate the sort of snob that tells other people that they can't have a gnome in their garden. You've got to have some sort of light relief in life, and I think gnomes uh, make ideal light relief. <laughs> to fun-loving Terry, gnomes are the children and playmates of Mother Earth, and in Melinda, Terry has finally found a life-size pixie pal. I've seen a lot of gnomes in my time. I've never seen one quite as buxom as Melinda. <laughs> 
So have there been any names here that have taken your fancy? Um, apart from me? Apart from you, no, darling, no. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the names are born. Gnomes are clearly in the major blood. Terry began working for the family gnome business at the age of 15, and here he is proudly sharing his gnome-making knowledge with the lovely Melinda. It's got a lovely touch. I have to do a bit of wiggling with this one. Right, a bit because of wiggling. It's a, bit, a little bit of wiggling, yeah. Is this pulling the rubber off? This is, this is pulling the rubber off, but you've got to wiggle it off. And Terry isn't the only major who frolics with gnomes. Apparently, his little brother, John, knows a thing or two about wiggling as well. My brother also uh, worked with me and made... He's made quite a few gnomes in his time. He's uh, quite a handy lad, he was. As our gnome lovers squat down for chess, Terry ponders on the politics of wearing pointy hats and distributes some advice from his gnome manifesto. Who cares about politics, work, when you can sit in a wood surrounded by gnomes, Mother Nature beaming down on you, lovely sunny day, it's the ideal thing. After the election result, John might think so too, Terry. If you think British gnomes are barking, just take a look at one of their European cousins.